Batman The Killing Joke is the latest animated Batman movie distributed by Warner Brother Pictures. It is loosely based on the graphic novel of the same name written by Alan Moore and Brian Bolland, made in 1988, which is like 30 years from now. And what better way to pay tribute to this iconic comic book than to bring back the majority favourites in voicing these beloved characters. We've got Kevin Conroy voicing Bruce Wayne slash Batman, Tara Strong as Batgirl slash Barbara Gordon, and last but definitely not least, we have Mark Hamill playing as the Joker. When I first heard that Warner Brothers was finally going to make this movie based on the killing joke, I was excited. It is one of the most interesting Batman stories ever to feature the Joker, because not only do you see him wreaking havoc and causing pain and misery through song and dance, and just seeing him basically at his best and trying to prove a point, you also see him at his worst, and you also see him for the first time in a very synthetic way. This is the chance to see who the Joker was before he became the Joker. You get to see his origin story. This film should have been made ages ago because it is without a doubt the most interesting Batman stories to ever feature the Joker, in my opinion. It's psychologically thought-provoking as well, and very intense. And also when they announced that DC was going to make this film rated R, I thought to myself, yes, they're actually not going to squeak down the violence, the gore, in, in the comic for, for young audiences. They're actually going to make this a 15 rated. Well, it's a 15 rated where I live. So yeah, I was really excited to see this film. The first thing that I loved about this movie was that the film links back to the past of the Joker, it's very black and white, it feels very retro, it feels as if you're watching a noir film. It's very interesting and an innovative way of, of storytelling and how they delved into the Joker's past and, and how he became to be. The voice acting was absolutely superb, I mean Kevin Conroy killed it as Batman, he was badass as always and Mark Hamill pulled off, in my opinion, the greatest performance he could ever pull so far. He was really spectacular as the Joker and he really succeeded in performing as the Joker in The Killing Joke. I really was obsessed with the Joker's monologue of how it takes one bad day to drive the sanest man alive to lunacy. I really couldn't wait to hear those words in movie form. And when they took lines from the monologue into that trailer that I saw, I was really excited. The animation of the film, I didn't have that much of a problem with it, even though there were scenes where it was spectacularly animated, but there were also bits where I had an issue with it. It was very poorly animated and, and look very cheap, especially the mouthing quality, and I was actually expecting the animation to be much better. It didn't look very impressive on the big screen. Now, I went into this film thinking that, of course, the, the film isn't just going to show the events happening in The Killing Joke, because the film is like 76 minutes, and the comic book is really short, so if they actually put The Killing Joke only, it, it wouldn't be a feature film, and that was why they added an additional storyline. And I have no problem adding additional storylines into, um, into comic book adaptations for the big screen. I understand that you have to change a few things, and here is what the issues that I have with this film. The first half of the film focuses on the relationship between Batman and Batgirl, and then the second half is The Killing Joke itself. But in my opinion, the first half of the movie did not need to be there. It wasn't necessary. The additional storyline did not link to The Killing Joke. It had nothing to do with each other. I understand that they were trying to improve Batgirl's image, they were trying to develop her, but they didn't even do that right. I mean, the entire story was based on the men around her life, the emotionally manipulative ways of the men controlling her life, so she doesn't have a chance to develop that much either. Her emotion is, is showing the best of her, she's having like feelings for Batman, the relationship between them is sort of confusing, a very weird storyline to add. It feels as if you're watching Batman, the animated series, two episodes and they don't even link together. In my opinion, they only added that additional storyline because they wanted to lengthen out the movie. They had to like add somehow an additional storyline to lengthen out the movie and make it into a feature film somehow, so they'd write basically anything. And they were trying to develop Batgirl's image, but unfortunately for me, they sort of failed and it should have been better. However, I would say that this additional storyline had something clever in it, and that was when Batman told Batgirl she's never taken crime fighting and all this action and violence seriously. It's all a game to her. So he tells her that he, she has never been to the abyss. She's never been to the point where all hope is lost. That was really clever because it actually links to the Joker and how he went into the abyss. He went to the point where all hope is lost. Batman certainly did. In my opinion, that was the message that the film was trying to portray, that you lead to a point where you're mad. And the question lies with, is there a point of turning back 
or not. And that was also the point of what the Joker was trying to pull. And that was clever. But other than that, the additional story, it didn't really need to be there. If you just took out the additional storyline of Batman and Batgirl, you wouldn't realize anything missing. It was thrilling and enticing to see uh, Batman and Batgirl chasing down villains. However, I was really confused. I didn't know what was going on. Where was this moment building up? When do we see the Joker? When do we actually see the killing joke? Having the Batman and Batgirl fiasco aside, I was really pleased with the killing joke. I really was. This was the moment that I was waiting for. The second half of the movie, I was overall pleased. I was really glad to see recreations of the scenes that you read in the comic book onto the big screen. And there was a lot of word for word lines from the comic book onto the screen, which I was really excited to see. And it was always exciting to see the Joker say his monologue as well. I believe that all fans of the, the killing joke would really enjoy that as well. But they'll be very disappointed with the animation quality. Although it sort of grew on me, it doesn't really work for the big screen. It looks a bit cheap. As an entire film, the story does not really work. Two storylines don't really connect together. It didn't really add anything. Although it reinforced the moral and the message of the film, it didn't really need to be there. I thought it would be much better if it was just 45 minutes and it just stuck to the comic book rather than just giving us a random storyline that does not connect with the killing joke. But nevertheless, I was really satisfied with the killing joke. I really enjoyed seeing the recreations of the comic book to the screen. I really enjoyed that. And I was overall satisfied with it. I really was. They really pulled a great um, adaptation of the comic book. And that's something that I at least have to be thankful for. Which is why I'm going to give Batman the killing joke a 7 out of 10. I also recommend reading the graphic novel because it's an excellent read. Imagine the people who have never read the graphic novel before. They'd be surprised if they saw this amazing moment that the Joker and the Batman had together in the end of the movie. I'm not sure whether to recommend reading the Killing Joke graphic novel before the movie because it sort of enhances the experience of watching it for the first time. So guys, The Killing Joke, what did you think of it? Did you think that it was the best Batman animated film ever? Did you think that it was everything that it needed to be? Or was it an utter disappointment and you were expecting better but it was not, it was an utter disaster? Who knows? Just comment down below, share me your thoughts, I'd love to hear them. And also, feel free to drop down below your favorite Batman animated film. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my film reviews. Until next time, guys, have one bad day.